1977, a small factory in Colvin Leicester got to work on something that would change the lives of countless people. Little did they realise that people were still care enough 40 years later to sit and listen to a guy waffle on about that product. This is the Star Wars Toy Podcast. Hello there and welcome to episode 30 of the Star Wars Toy Podcast. On this week's show, we have a very special guest, David Whiteley. Hello, David. <laughs> Hi, Mark. I, I say what, a, what an introduction. Thank you very much. I feel about very special, but thank you. thanks for having me on. That's fine. Um, you, we are, you are special. You know, you know you are. Well, that's very kind. That's very, I wonder, that's very kind. Thank you. Well, we're, we're, we're all big Star Wars fans together. And that, that's, that's true. Amazing. That's why we're here for this podcast. <laughs> Um, so we know about uh, your documentary, The Galaxy, Britain Built. Uh, but to start off with, I just want to talk about you. And I've got 10 questions for you to answer. All right, okay. If that's oh, all right. right. <laughs> yeah, of course it is, yeah. Um, number one, uh, what's your first Star Wars memory? Oh, right, okay. The one that's very vivid for me, because um, I, was, I was born, you know, May the 4th, May the 4th be with you. Yep. 1977. So I was I was very young when the first one came out. But I, I, I think one of the one of the moments, I don't know if it's my very first. I've, I've got hazy ones, but the, the, my very my most vivid memory was was um, 1983. My dad taking me to see Return of the Jedi at the cinema in South End on Sea, where I grew up, near where I grew up, and we were in the third row. And I remember the noise of the rancor eating the Gamorrean guard. <laughs> absolutely terrified me i thought and i remember that the crunching noise echoing reverberating around, oh. around the whole cinema uh but i just you know i was I, mean, I remember seeing star wars we had it we had one of those old vhs top loaders <laughs> and eventually star wars was was on home release was it? Uh, oh, uh, it was it? <laughs> yeah so so i maybe i saw it when i was five four or five years old oh, wow. i can't remember exactly and 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 then i just got hooked you know, and it was the toys. The toys really kind of, you know, hooked me in. I mean, George Lucas was still is a very clever man. Oh, yes. And um, you know, to to create the toys, um, really kind of lassoed people into into the galaxy. Definitely. Uh, so number two, what is your favourite outfit? Oh, what in Star Wars or in general? <laughs> um, <laughs> Either. Oh wow. Um, well, I mean, I think what's become my uniform for me, with these two documentaries I've made is I've got this, I've got this um, Star Wars T-shirt that's got two sevens on it. Yeah, we've seen it in '77. Yeah, and um, one is the is if it's the afterburner of the Millennium Falcon, the other one's the, the X-wing, yeah. probably Red Five, um, and uh, yeah, very t- made by a very talented designer who, who told me he designed it. He got in touch with me on Twitter, and I do love that T-shirt, but I also I. I, I I did buy <laughs> did buy a replica jacket of Han Solo's from the Force Awakens. So I thought it was oh, quite wow. cool, but but I think I've only worn it once. <laughs> <laughs> right, number three. Then, what's your favourite lightsaber? Oh wow, that's a tough one. Um, I think I think as I've met Roger Christian and um, we've become friends over the years, yep. I think I'm going to have to say go with with. Um, well, Anakin's, it's Luke's, isn't it? And whoever, and it ended up being raised, didn't it? Um, yeah. Then going back. But I, yeah, that one, the original, the one that was the, the Graflex handle. Yeah. Um, the one that, that Alec Guinness hands to, to Mark Hamill yeah. uh, in A New Hope. I think I'm going to have to go with that one, even though I, I do love the green one as well. I do love Luke's in Return of the Jedi. But yeah, well, I found that, out that recently one. that uh, it was made from a camera handle, wasn't it? Flash handle. For yeah, camera. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's, that's why I, I think. I think because I know the story very well, and I know Roger uh, found that in a in an old shop in 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 London. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, that one, and I've and I've held a, 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 one of the one of the prototypes. So yeah, I'll I'll oh, go with that one. Wow, <laughs> amazing! <laughs> so number four, it's a bit of a curveball one. Uh, what is the weirdest thing in Star Wars? <sighs> What's the weirdest thing? Yeah. I mean, it Gosh, could be an alien, it could be a scene, or it could be something that happens. Oh, wow. That's a good one, Mark. Um, well, it's all weird, isn't it? It's all weird and wonderful. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it really is. Weirdest thing. There are several things that have struck me as being 
slightly strange over the years. I think one of the ones that just stood out for me, um, I've recently gone back to the prequels and I was watching Revenge of the Sith with my eldest daughter. Really enjoyed getting back into that. Um, but isn't there a line, isn't it in Attack of the Clones when the guy in the bar is selling death sticks, which are supposed to be cigarettes? Yeah. And I always thought that was just slightly, slightly more weird than other things. I don't know why. It just struck me. Uh, but clever to use. I think Obi-Wan Kenobi uses Jedi mind trick to make him go home and rethink his life. <laughs> yeah. um, which, uh, and also in that film, the character Dex as well. Um, you know, oh, yeah. That was... Yeah, everybody... That was... Um, Alvin Kenobi yeah. likes that. <laughs> I bet that... <laughs> Dying a bit. <laughs> oh, great stuff. I, I just... I, yeah, it's all weird and wonderful, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's... it's you, you get lost in Star Wars, but yeah. Of course. Yeah, that's... That's quite a some weird moments, definitely. Yeah, I, I'm sure I can. I'm sure I could think of more if I had more time. But yeah, oh yeah, definitely that. So number five, what's your favourite moment? Ooh, gosh, oh, so many. Oh, that's that's unfair. Um, <laughs> okay, um, so much emotion in Star Wars and wrapped up in it. I think because you know, um, my dad got me into it. He's no longer around. We used to go watch them all together. Um, so, so the, all the music and all the crescendos of the movies are great. Um, I really, I really enjoyed the end of Rise of Skywalker. Actually, I thought it was great. I, I really, um, I really love the end of Return of the Jedi. Um, the original one, are they? Yeah. I, well, I, just, I love it. I tell you, I, I think as much as I love all the the battles with Darth Vader and, and the redemption of Darth Vader, um, uh. I think for me, one of the great scenes is when is when um, I think Wedge is already heading out of the Death Star in Death Star Two, and Lando is flying the Falcon, and the 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 ball of fire is going around them, and you think oh, they're not going to make yeah. it, and they punch through, <laughs> yeah, and the Falcon and the the music crescendos, they go yoo-hoo! I just think that <laughs> to me is that I think I think if I think Star Wars, if Star Wars makes you feel like that inside, then it then it then it, it's done the right oh, thing. Definitely. You know, there's all those moments with, you know, with, you know, when you when our heroes, whoever they may be from whichever trilogy, you know, uh, are winning. Um, and, and it's in a great, a glorious moment. I think that's that's what Star Wars is. Definitely. So number six, what's your top soundtrack? Oh, that's a good one. Um, that's really hard because um, I'm looking at the soundtracks now in my office at home. Um, <sighs> love a new hope. Really enjoyed Rogue One's uh, soundtrack. Yeah, brilliant. Um, but I think, for me, purely because it felt like John Williams saying goodbye, um, and it, it ended up being the John Williams greatest hits of Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, because all the way through, you've got snippets of the Imperial March, you've got a bit of the Empress theme, Princess Leia's theme, um, you know, the original, the original um, you know, the title music. Yeah. And and it's all it's all in this wonderful amalgamation of all the great music that we've come to know and love. You know, Ray's theme in in the in the uh, sequel trilogy, and it was all brilliantly interwoven. And um, I've actually pretty much had that on repeat since the film came out because it's just it's just got a bit of everything in there, hasn't it? I've not um, I've not actually listened to the soundtrack because I I I collect vinyl. Uh, ah, I'm not and it's not out on vinyl, yet, out vinyl yet. So I've not. I mean, I've got Spotify. I can listen to it. I probably listen to it after this actually. <laughs> yeah, you, you must. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I've, I've waxed lyrical about it, but yeah, I, I, I love it on vinyl. I'd love it on vinyl actually. Yeah, yeah, it's nice on vinyl. But yeah, it's. Got the old it's I just, I just, but yeah, I, but there's, a, but there's a great track in Last Jedi, and it's um, the Spark. And I love that one. Yeah, like when all hope is lost, and you know, and and and, he, and Luke turns up, you know, um, as a force projection, as we now know, and kisses his sister on the head, and it's just that whole build up was wonderful. But yeah, for me, I think it's the right Skywalker soundtrack. Wow. Okay. So, all right, number seven. What planet would you like to vacation on? <laughs> Not tattooing. Um, <laughs> I hear sand. Get sunburned. <laughs> yeah, too much. Yeah, sand. Not hot. I mean, skiing might be good in hot. Um, uh, the ski resorts might be good there. Um, oh, holiday. What's um? Oh, I've forgotten the. What's Padme's home? Nibble. Naboo, yeah, that looks quite yeah, nice. Yeah, it's. Uh... I think that looks pretty good. Um, I think Naboo looks pretty good. Um, where else? Coruscant looks a bit. 
No, <laughs> um, not really interested in that. Uh, that was a place to kind of retire to. Um, you can't yeah, hold it on. <laughs> it's the older one. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> Hanging on to space dust now, a bit of a, the asteroid. Um, yeah, Naboo, I think. Let's go with Naboo. Lovely. Yeah, I've just, um, I've, I'm looking for a cheap holiday and I was thinking, <laughs> well, I want to go to somewhere where Star Wars was filmed. <laughs> So it was either oh, Hoth yeah. or um, Tatooine. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So you got you got Finster in Norway, haven't you? Yeah, where they where they filmed Hoth, and you've got you got Tunisia. You yeah, know, well, I've put for Tunisia uh, because one, it's warmer, and two, it's cheaper. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, Norway's wonderful, but um, the beer's a bit more pricey. Yeah, very expensive. <laughs> so number eight, what's your favourite quote? Mm. Ooh. Oh, I could, I could be really boring and cliche and remember the force will be with you always. But I, what's, oh, I'm trying to think now. I'm trying to think. Oh, I think, I think what was great, I mean, in the, in the, in the sequel trilogy, actually, it was the, the Kylo Ren redemption. And you've got, and he, you know, you know, when he kills Han Solo and he says, I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. And then he, he does it at the end when, when Han comes back as a memory yeah. or whatever. And um, the fact they repeated that again, I thought that's a that's a great quote, isn't it? It is. Um, but yeah, no. But I I, I think I think mo- most of Han Solo's quotes are great. Um, actually, Princess Leia is great as well. I mean, the the, the scripts for the originals, uh, some of the stuff they they had was was great. You know, um, yeah. When they, <laughs> you've got no time to discuss this with a committee. I am not a committee. <laughs> that okay. That for me is one of the. I think. Great couple of lines, I think. Um, the banter they have, yeah, that banter. Leia I don't think George wrote that though. <laughs> Sorry, no, no, maybe not. Um, but I, I just, I just think some of the lines are like that, you know, that Han Solo has, you know, never tell me the odds, shut him up or shut him down, yeah. you know. <laughs> I think that's people, uh, Lawrence Castle, you know, to, just, yeah, he, yeah, it's a new absolutely, one. yeah, right. So, number nine. What's your favourite character or figure? Easy one. Though. Wow, uh, I think it's got to be Han Solo. I think for me, if I, you know, a lot of people ask me what my favourite character is, I think I think Princess Leia is is fabulous as well. Yeah. I, obviously, everyone loves Luke as well. I I just think <laughs> all of them, <laughs> but for me, yeah, all of them really. But I, yeah, and I, I you know, I I really enjoyed the way. I don't know. Everybody enjoyed the Rise of Skywalker, but I really did. <laughs> just, just, I just suspended disbelief and just enjoyed it, um, and just, just enjoyed all the characters and that. But I, I think ultimately over the entire, you know, entire saga, then, then, yeah, Han Solo. Right. So number ten, a nice easy one. What's your favourite movie? Well, not. Oh come on! Let's, if it, you, you know, what I'm going to say to this. Thing. I, I, I don't want your. I don't want the best one. So we know what the best one is. I want your favourite movie. Your my favourite. Yeah, not the best one. That your favourite one. It might be the same. Yeah, I think. I think Empire. Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think Empire. But but I mean, you see people rank their Star Wars films on Twitter, and then people get upset about it. Well, you know, it's what you and yeah. It's, Joy, it's what it? you, you grew know, up with. Your favourite film is it? Absolutely, and and uh, you know when I revisited the prequels with my kids, you know they love them. Yeah. They're great fun. You know that's what George was doing. You know and and you know if your favourite movie is Attack of the Clones, well that's your favourite movie. <laughs> you know, um, but 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 up there for me now it's you know Empire, um, Rogue One. I'm biased because I you know I've met Gareth Edwards yeah. and, <laughs> and kept in touch with him and, and Colin who edited it. We become good friends. Um, and I, uh, you know, obviously Return of the Jedi is a connection for me, New Hope. And I, I genuinely enjoyed Rise of Skywalker, you know, and, and, you know, and Solo was fun. So, yeah, there's, 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 lots, of good, there's lots of good ones. There's a Star Wars for everyone. <laughs> it certainly is. It certainly is. So, right, uh, that's that done. I want to get on to your collecting habits now. As, oh, as this well, is a Star Wars toy podcast, yeah. I'd like to talk about your collection. What do you collect? Well, um, I, I've still got, to be fair, I've still got a lot of my original stuff. So uh, all very battered, all very battered. So I've got uh, the Millennium Falcon that I had from probably around the age of five or six. Um, 
and of course loads of bits had gone mark you know and so i was i went to ebay i probably spent more money on ebay than that. i just bought a new a new second yeah a new second hand one uh, i didn't tell my wife how much i spent on bits of cardboard to put the backing in and all that kind of yeah. stuff but i just wanted to rebuild mine because it's my yeah. millennium falcon um and I've still got a lot of my original figures. They're very battered, but I never quite had all the proper original 12. Played with. I got buckets. Yeah, absolutely. But I've got buckets of figures. So I, I have been on eBay and I've bought a few, you know, 30 or 40 quid. I've not gone crazy. Um, and and I, I genuinely like having a few of the, the more modern ones. So I'm looking at a few in my office. And, you know, I, I've got a few, quite a, I've got all the figures from, from Rogue One, um, or most of them. And I've got a few from, force awakens and last jedi but I, I haven't really seen any from from the latest movie and i and i'm you know come on i'll buy them you well, sell they didn't them i'll do, buy you yeah. they didn't do the three three quarter ones why not because people are buying them apparently they did a no. four off a four a five inch kiddie line obviously did the black series yeah and uh, that's the main line now um the vintage collection and the retro collection I don't believe there's, uh, there's too many lines out there, but the, not yeah. to, for them not to do a three and three quarter for the last film is quite astounding, really. I can't, I, I'm, because, I, you know, it's taken over a billion dollars, isn't it, at the box office? <laughs> so people, people want to buy into that, you know, because I've, you know, I've got, um, we've got the art of, of Rise of Skywalker on order. I've got, you know, other bits and bobs, yep. and, I, and they've got the soundtrack, and you think, come on, I just want a couple of figures, a few figures. Yeah. You know, in that in the mix there, I did buy the the retro figures mainly for the making of the of the uh, Toy Empire documentary, yeah. um, and I had to open one of them, which was heartbreaking. Oh, but I thought no. they're not, but they're not from. I thought, hang on, David, but they're not. They're not from seventy eight. No, it doesn't no, matter. But it still, it <laughs> you know, still hurts. It feels, it? <laughs> it feels wrong. It, it feels is, wrong. It I, wrong. The, I had to open Farm Boy Luke for some shots, and I was like, oh, oh no. Okay, just do it. Just bust it open. Just <laughs> you could have bought mine. Thank you. Yeah, you see, the thing is, my original one is in such bad nick. I had to do that because I needed the lightsaber because I didn't have the lightsaber. So I thought I'm gonna have to just open this. They're getting harder to to find with the tips. Are they? What the? Yeah. Oh, with the tips. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, they're mainly replicas now, aren't they? That Ooh. people have. That's something I want to talk about. Um, what do you think about repro? <sighs> well, I think. I think if it's for a, a you know if it's a blaster or a lightsaber and it just completes your collection and you're happy with it, then absolutely fine. But I, obviously, there's. Do you think? No, it's a big no no in the Is collector it? community. Is in it? the in the Star Wars collector community, any no. other toy collector, it's okay. Action Man, Transformers, really? C Man, but not oh, in Star I, Wars. Have I, have I gone to the dark side? Am I? Yes, I'm afraid a, you, know, you have. I need. You, I think you need. Uh, Reeducating. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what I'm saying is that if, you, if you've got your own collection and you're not that serious about it, yeah, but you just don't mind having a repro. It's, it's the fact of buying it and people, if people buy it, they're obviously going to make more. I can understand what you mean about it's your collection and yeah, it was one of your collection to look good, but uh, I, I, th this is my point of view and most, most Star Wars collectors' point of view. Is if you're going to collect, you've got to do it properly. You oh no, the, I, the, I, the, I, the I agree. I agree on that front. What yeah. I'm saying is, is that for people like me who aren't that serious, I'm not. I mean, I I collect my stuff to look at and think, oh, that that looks great. But if you've got the genuine thing, of course, you have to have the actual weapon, and you cut and, and a repro just won't do. Um, but if you're just going to leave it sitting on your desk and you like me and you like you don't care if that's the yeah, it's not that I genuine. So, yeah, you know. That, that's what I meant. I, I, but I appreciate if you're a serious. Oh no, if you're a serious one, then surely you have I've, to have the actual seen, thing because um, you because you will know, won't you? I've seen I've seen videos of people. Well, what I won't, I won't mention the YouTube channel, but uh, there was a video saying that uh, we're elitist. <laughs> so, really? So yeah, uh, I think we are to, think to a certain point of view. We are because oh. we want it right. Yeah, but I think that if you want it right, then of course you've got to have it right. I mean, I'm just saying that for me, if I, you know, wanted to complete my old Han Solo and the only way I was going to get a, a blaster was a repro and I just wanted to stand in my office, that's fine. And yeah. But I'm not oh, going to yeah, go around saying it's a genuine blaster. You know? But the thing, the thing, the way I look at it is you're going to be paying 
I don't know how much you pay for these repros and that these days, but for what you're paying for a repro, you, you can get a original for just can a bit you? more. All right. Yeah, so, okay. Well, well you, may mean, as well, you may as well get an original then. If you if you if you're thinking something like Princess Leia Blaster, obviously they're going to be a lot more. They're about mm. sixty pound to buy. Right. Um, so I mean, you can just shop about. That's what that's what I do. I I just I just if you be patient, so, because what you want will come. The, the, Can I just say something? Oh, t- I'm going to confess something now. I have no repros in. Oh, I have no repros. That's good. So <laughs> all my stuff is genuine, and when I bought one, it's been been with a genuine figure and a genuine and not good. a repro. But, I'm not um, trying to preach uh, to anybody because <laughs> I just it, that it is what it is. It's um, just a big no-no in the right, com- okay. community. And if you if you're on a like a Facebook group or anything like that, and you you mention repro, oh, you get kicked off and you get oh, banned, and oh, really? oh, it's word. really it is really bad. It is really bad. All right. You're just, just going to okay. be okay. Well, well, I really I, careful I, with I, it. I don't I don't advocate repros. Then I'm not advocating any repros. Um, but I. <laughs> but the thing know, is, the thing is, well, some like the next thing I wanted to is, is customs. What do you mm. think about customs? I mean, they're not reproductions. Well, they are reproductions, but if if it's something that hasn't come out, mm. I think it's fair mm. enough. What do you think? I think it's if if people if people want to make their own thing, that's up that's up to them because some people are always going to want to uh, adapt things, aren't they? But as you say, if it's not something that that's genuine, it has to be taken on face value. Yeah, I mean, I know people. I have one company that uh, has bought the molds. For a certain figure, and they right. paid like four thousand pounds for a mold. So I don't know how they're going to get the money back. To be honest with you, Who, who's going to buy them? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Who's going to who's going to buy them? Um, but I, I come back to what you were saying earlier. I think it's just a shame that there's no three and three quarter inch for the latest movie. You know, yeah. Um, but do you see a de- do you see a decline in that? People aren't interested in that. Is is that what you think? <sighs> I've talked about it before on the podcast. I, do kids play with toys anymore? Mm. Because mm. you get maybe, maybe younger much. kids do. Yeah. But then when they get into, what, well, I don't know, eight, nine, ten, they're going on to games, consoles, even mobile phones. Mm. And toys are, I don't think toys are a thing as much as they were back in our day. Well, because oh, we didn't have anything else. <laughs> Well, no, that's it. That's it. That's the whole thing about Star Wars. Is yeah. we had, well, for me, I had Star Wars, just the one movie. And that was it. A few figures, and an imagination to make stories for myself with the figures. That was the good thing about that's, the figures yeah. is you could carry, you could have adventures with those figures. Yeah, and I think that was where George Lucas was a genius because exactly. it would be would perpetuate the. The um, the attachment to the film, wouldn't it? Because there was no, you didn't get the Blu-ray within a few months. You didn't get there was no such thing. You didn't you didn't get the no. VHS for ages. There was no, and you, there were three years between each film. No. Um, so you had you had you know the the, the comics and um, you had the figures, and that that was it. Yeah. As you say you had to recreate your own Star, or make your own Star Wars adventures, which we which we all love doing. Exactly. That's that. I th- it's all down to nostalgia. That's what that is yeah, like. Totally, I click because totally. the feeling I get when I see or I hold a figure in my hand. I don't play with them, obviously anymore. Honestly, um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> but it's just I've got them in the cabinet here, and I just look at them and I think it just makes me feel good. That's yeah, the whole point of collecting back, them. It? it just takes you back. I mean, I had a lot of feedback on that with with Toy Empire. It was, yeah, that was brilliant. People said it was you know it, people just were just taken taken back there. Um, you know, when we, we discovered that, that advert with, with Boba Fett on it and, um, and the quality we got it in was just fantastic. Yeah. And, and, um, that was actually in the auction at prop store and I gave us permission to use it. Wow. Um, and it, it, it had been upscaled and cleaned up to, to make it, you know, it was virtually yeah. HD. <laughs> and to see that it was like going back, someone had rewound the clock, hadn't it? Wasn't it? He just, oh, definitely. Oh, this advert, you know? Yeah. So I can remember the I can well I can remember most of the adverts, but the I think the advert I remember the most is the speeder bike one. Yeah, that's the, the one for the return yeah, of the Jedi, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, with going through around the, the table legs and <laughs> that's right. that was unbelievable. Going around the trees on on Endor, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably why I've got 
three speeder bikes here. <laughs> oh well, I've got I've got my speeder bike sitting on my speaker in my office, oh, looking at me right now. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's superb. So, um, next thing, what do you t- think about grading? Oh, you're asking the wrong person here for that. <laughs> um, well, so so yeah, so remind me again what they, are they graded? Is it A, B, and C or? Well, you send your figures off. To, yeah. which means you've, oh, got, to, see, you've yeah. got to post them which I don't like doing anyway Ooh, send them to a to complete they, they stranger to... To, to, to tell you if it's <laughs> good I'm not trying to <laughs> tell you you know you obviously know I don't like it but you, you, you've got to get a complete stranger to tell you if your figure's good or bad well what you could do is you could drive it to them I suppose but if but yeah. they, are, are they qualified they're qualified people. yeah well there's, yeah, this, uh, there's a couple in America there's the UKG there's FA and CAS in America and yeah. it's UKG in, FA, yeah. in the UK obviously um, but you've got to pay them so much money to, for them to tell you whether your uh, figure's good well you know mm. it is or it isn't I mean you can tell but I think I think what the grading does is uh, gives it more value mm. because then you know wouldn't that be the same with anything though with with any antique um, because we're now looking at you know some of these toys are you know they're they're forty years old plus and and I suppose it does give it that um, provenance doesn't it that to have an expert look at it and then and then kind of give it that seal of approval that then um, I suppose it's down to the individual if you wanted to. Um, have your stuff graded, then fine. But it, I suppose if you were going to put it in an auction or have it insured, wouldn't you want that? You know that that kind of uh, official value on it. I don't know. Yeah, there, there is that. It's uh, it does it does save it from the elements as well. I suppose. Um, yeah, it just it just seems like a waste of time to me, to be honest with you. But I'm I'm asking your opinion. Um, if 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 you had, let's say, if you had a a Darth Vader carded figure from 1978 and it was a Star Wars say Star Wars A A card mm-hmm. would you just put it in your cabinet maybe in a acrylic case by yourself or would you send it to somebody to have a look at, have, a, have a look at and grade if it if I knew if I, if I was happy with it and I liked the look of it and I thought that's fine I wouldn't I'd keep I wouldn't I wouldn't want to put it in the post. No, that's, <laughs> that's, frankly, that's, that's I wouldn't want it. my entire point. I don't. I'm. I won't. I've. T- I don't know if I've told this story before, but I. I used to have a toy shop, and somebody bought six figures off me, six carded figures, and I drove them to him. Yeah, I drove them to him. Yeah. Instead of put, I said, "Look, I'm not going to post them." Carded figures. I drove them to him. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. About seventy, eighty mile. But, yeah, yeah. I, but I think I think as well that that it's up to the individual, isn't it? If you feel happy putting, um, you know, can you could you could do special delivery, couldn't you, or, or sign for delivery? Yeah, yeah but I, I, I used to work uh, in a courier service, and I know what happens. That's what right. scares me. Okay. okay. Well, I think I think it's, it's horses for courses. If you want to put, if you want to have have the official grade, then great. Yeah. But on a personal level, if I had a you know, to be fair, I would never have anything like that because <laughs> I, I, I couldn't justify paying the money. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever think I, I wouldn't personally spend huge amounts of money on them. Mm. Well, I've got, I've I, got I a Meccano Ben Canova carded, wow. and wow. I bought it um, graded. It was graded when I bought it. And yeah, it was graded at sixty. We got to up to a hundred. So sixty is not not brilliant, but the only thing right. wrong with it was a little. I don't I don't know if it's a crack or a pinprick or anything in the bubble. And that's all it is. You can't even see it. The card's perfect. Everything's perfect, but it's got a sixty. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, f- I feel like cracking it open and. <laughs> just, <laughs> but I'm not going. Obviously, not going to. It's just. You might as well open it then. It's just yeah, it's just saying uh, Who would have who would have graded that then? It was it's an FA, it's the American. But I think uh-huh. I've been told that it was an early grade back when mm. they first started grading. So I, could you I, could you get it regraded now? Yeah, that's what I'm I'm thinking about doing is I don't have to open it. 
probably, I probably, oh, I don't know. Because if I send it with the 60, they'll probably put 60 back. Yeah, yeah, and you spend the money. Yeah, well. Having it done. And because, like I say, they were, they were stricter back then. Uh, I don't think, I, I'd, I'd say 75 from, from my eye. Could you could you go into grading? I mean, you know oh, a lot about. Yeah. You... yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. But uh, again, I don't agree with it, so I don't think it's something I'd. I mean, I probably I'd like to do it, maybe, value people's uh, figures and vehicles and things like that. Uh, maybe not encase it in acrylic, as such, but maybe give them a like a little certificate to say that. Yeah. Something that, to that think it gets your seal of approval, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, that, it, that, it, that it's definitely worth a certain amount of money. Definitely something to think about. Yeah, and if definitely. there's anybody out there that wants that, <laughs> <laughs> come on, yeah. the phone mark now. Yeah, you've got me a email. Do you think there's too many, too many um, different ranges to choose from? There are. Is that what you think? There are too many different. I mean, you've got the Black Series, which is for the collectors. The retro collection, which is for the collectors. Uh, your vintage collection, which is for your collectors. And you've got your, I think the five inch kiddie line, but you've got nothing in between. Mm. I said the, I, I just for me personally as a you know as a Star Wars fan, you know I'd have I'd have been I'd have happily bought a dozen figure three and three quarter inch from Rise of Skywalker. You know that for me would have been would have been great. Um, and I keep looking, thinking maybe they'll. Maybe they'll well, that's it. That's maybe the, maybe this is the first film they haven't brought a three and three quarter mm. line out for, and it's the last film. So why not mm. just bring five or six figures out? I don't know. Just for me. Just for just me. Just for you, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> the other thing is they've got the vintage collection. So why not repackage those on the three and three quarter boxes? I don't know. I don't know what they're playing at. How's the bro? Do you think there'll be figures in the future for, for other, anything else that, that, that you know, any, any, like the Mandalorian or anything? Do you think they'll do that? The Mandalorian, there's some vintage collection figures coming out, but it's not three three quarter again. Um, I think I think to be honest with you, the the companies that are doing really well with Star Wars are Funko and Lego. Mm, mm. Oh, Lego is just oh. is just you know fantastic, isn't the, it? The, the, the stuff you can get from Lego. And the thing with those two properties are they're on the shelves; you can find them. Mm. Where as Hasbro. Merchandise, you just can't, you cannot find it anywhere. Yeah, I went into a store the other day, um, and I, I was sort of just going to look, see what's about, and um, so much Star Wars Lego, it's fantastic. It is, it is. they've got really impressive uh, sets as well with the new Star Destroyer. I'm tempted to buy that. Oh, wow, how much is that? That's like 650 pounds. <laughs> oh, wow, I know, I'll yeah, see it in okay. the window That's in the Lego much. shop, and I'm thinking, oh. That's uh, eye watering sun there, Mark. To be fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I uh, I nearly bought the Millennium Falcon, which is six hundred and fifty yeah, pounds as well. Yeah. But that's, I, that's I, same, isn't I it, have yeah. the um, the studio model version from the part work, so I've no room for both. <laughs> well, that's it. But I mean, I I just have to stick with my original, you know, old battered uh, Millennium Falcon. But um, yeah. I I just for me, for me, just having still that, that collection of stuff, like, you know, I've got the Athat, the Rebel Transporter, Millennium Falcon, um, you know, the figures, uh, well, apart of an X-Wing, that, that's formed a bit. But, you know, just, just to have those, just to have those for me, I think, and hang on to the collection and occasionally adding Definitely. some original figures, you know, that, 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 that's, that's the, the summation of my collecting, I think. Um, you know, I, I, I think you collect a certain thing, don't you? And if you change that, then you then have to start collecting other things. Well, that's it. What you're saying about too many lines? There's just too many things to collect. Like I, I'm still collecting my vintage line. It can never stop. Mm. You, you, somebody said to me, "What would you collect? Black series or um, vintage?" And and he, he said to me that uh, he'd rather do the vintage because once you've got the yeah. 96, you're done. And I said, no, yeah. you're not. <laughs> once you've got the 96, you want the 96 carded, 
and you want all the play sets, all the vehicles. There's just yeah, well, too is, much to collect. It doesn't stop. I, I, you know, to be fair, I didn't, I didn't say the tip line. You said that. You put words in my mouth because <laughs> I, I think there are there are plenty of people who, who buy different lines. But I, I, I've spoken to some very serious collectors uh, who didn't make the cut in the end of, of on our film, but they're very serious, and they said that you know you, and you never stop. No. So if you, as you said at the ninety six, you know, then different variations be, uh, are discovered, and then and then you've got to have all those ones. And then, and then you become this. You become a completist because you have to have the complete set of everything. Exactly. You know, that's that's you know that's what that's what um, people want. They want the complete set. So if you collect the, you know, the black series or whatever it may be, you'll want absolutely everything in that in that range. Like with with with, with the Lego, you're never going to stop, are you? Oh, with Lego, no. Oh, so much going out coming out every week with Lego. <laughs> but that's why. That's why I. <laughs> I'm not. I'm resisting getting into anything else because I think, well, I'll just go down that route, and then then all my money will go on that. Well, what I do is obviously collect my vintage and black series. I collect what I like. If yeah, there's exactly. a, If there's a piece of Lego exactly. that I like, I'll 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 get it. So you won't you won't be too obsessed about getting everything within a oh, certain no. range. Then no. Well, but the vintage, I I did have the full collection, and um, I had to get rid of them, so I'm re re. Collecting. I think that, to be fair, I mate, I think that's the, the, a lot of people's story. You know, yeah. people get rid of collections and then, oh, I wish I hadn't got rid of exactly. that. And then you start, well, you start. The good thing again with your collection is it's your original collection. That is, well, I'm not all, not I'm all impressed fair, by that. But <laughs> some of it well, yeah, that, but you still got the, the collection they had. I mean, yeah, the thing I yeah. the thing I did in 1985 is uh, sold all all my collection for 18 figures. <laughs> no. uh, well, you say that I've got some. Of my, I've got my original 18 figures. Oh. Still. Never. Yeah. Well, the, the, what are they? They're what size are they? They're they're about they six, six inch, inch. Yeah. 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 I've got BA bracket. They're like muscly, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were great. They were pretty cool, um, actually. Yeah, I love the A team. I'm yeah, yeah. Fan as well. That Definitely. was all cool area, wasn't it? Definitely. I oh, think we could talk about eighties TV. Even <laughs> <laughs> we could just go down that route. Yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> TV. But that whole era, I think it's interesting. You're saying earlier about you know the way. People play with things. Kids play with toys now. It's very different to when, to that kind of eighties, nineties time. Um, it all kind of exploded in a very short period of time with with the three and three quarter inch figures and and everything changing. And then, and then, maybe it is dwindling now. Maybe it is just the way it is. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, Star Wars created the three three quarter figure, and um, maybe now we've killed it off. <laughs> I, who knows? Who knows? Maybe it's 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 run its course. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, as you say, um, but there there are still a, other figures and other lines out there. We have that size. Yeah, but I, th- I think the things with the lines is how many play sets do you actually see now? So you don't need th- what? The, the vehicles and the play sets. You don't need th- so, such a small figure now because there's no play sets and no um, vehicles. So. Like say to the Black Series, they brought some vehicles out and they're massive and very expensive, but there's no play sets, anything like that. Just play sets and vehicles, I think, are dead. I think it's just, I just figure, I think figures now are just for collecting. Like I said Maybe, before, yeah, kids, having, kids having having standing on your shelf, yeah, having standing on your shelf, or yeah, around your games console or around your computer or whatever. Yeah. Um, certainly, that's that's the case with me, but I'm a 42 year old kid, so. <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that. So what's what's coming up next for you? Oof, well, um, to be honest, having done having done both the documentaries that were um, all consuming, um, I think a rest and just back to the day job because I present Inside Out in the East of England yep. on BBC One. Um, so and a, a producer as well. Um, so I kind of did those projects in in tandem with it with everything right. else. Um, and it was just all consuming, very rewarding. And I'm Definitely. just so grateful that people, um, you know, the, the critics were really great about it. But for me and, and Matt, my friend who, who I, I made them with, just having, you know, people on Twitter and fans just really enjoying them. That because I thought, oh, I really hope people enjoy this. People who are hardcore fans, because you, you don't want to upset the fans of Star Wars. And I just thought, as long as people enjoy them and they learn something new. and um, Oh, overall, I think people have been very kind, and 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 it's a very humbling experience. Actually, 
definitely it's, it's an amazing documentary both of them both of them are. thank you thank you thank you um i understand they are out on dvd no they're not they no not? they're they no no they um they they they're not being released as far as i know that's a shame um I'm hoping they'll come back at some point and get a get a repeat view uh, screening because they're off the iPlayer now. Um, that is a real show. I, I did hear at one point they were going to be put on for about a year, yeah. but they're not at the moment. So, so they might go back on again at some point. But when they do, I'll let, I'll let people know. But at the moment, they're sort of they're sort of um, in the archive. So, real so show. they, I know, um, I, I I know. Wouldn't it be nice to give them a another lease of life elsewhere? But um, mm. yeah, at the moment they are, you know, they, they screened at Christmas, you know, they, they stay on the iPlayer for a, for a, uh, a month. Um, they may end up going on for a year at some point, but, but I just, I just don't know. I'm, I'm hoping they'll be repeated, but um, who knows? Mm, maybe on BBC One, BBC Two, that'd be, uh, that'd be even better. Oh, that'd be great, Mark. Let's, let's, yeah, let's well, that we'll start, let's, we'll start the petition now. Well, let's start the petition now. <laughs> Well, you do that. I can't, I can't possibly. I can't possibly. Yeah. Get well. Involved. Yeah. But, uh, I will I'm really impartial, but but um, but yeah, it would be nice. Wouldn't it? It, it would be great it to be kind amazing. of to to have them to have them out. Um, you know, so people could 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 watch them if they if they so desired. But you have a book out. I do. Yes. Um, this I I went back and did uh, a lot more interviews. Um, having having done the Galaxy Britain built, I I I wanted to tell more stories around the people we interviewed um, and a bit more about their careers and a bit more, a bit more in depth really yeah. about the stuff that, that was in, that was in the documentary. I've also got some fabulous pictures that belong to um, the people that have become my friends who worked on, who worked on Star Wars that are in the book um, from their personal collections, which is just amazing. Um, so yeah, so I've got a publisher in America, um, Bear Man and Media. And um, yeah, so the, the, the book is out now. So um, it's a bit weird actually. I have to say it was a bit when I when I saw it on Amazon and then when I got a box delivered, it was like, oh, oh, it says it's my name's on this. Um, and, uh, the four was by Robert Watts, who was the production supervisor and, and ended up producing, you know, some of the Star Wars films and Indiana Jones. Wow. Um, so, yeah, so it's it's out now. It's a bit bit weird, really. So we're, going to, we're actually going to give give one away, aren't we? Yeah, well, I tell you, you can give two away if you want. I mean, I'll let you, you can have two if you want. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, Is that all right? I want to get one myself, yeah. but <laughs> okay. I'm, I am ashamed to say I have not read it yet. Um, <laughs> I'm still trying to get hold of one, but uh, if I'll, if you want to send the link over, I'll uh, put it in the show notes to the yeah, great, publisher or yeah. whenever you can buy it. I'll the Amazon that, yeah. link. Um, but yeah. Um, so have we got a question? The question is, what gun? Did set decorator Roger Christian use to adapt, which then became Han Solo's blaster? Brilliant. And I can devalue it and sign it if they like. Yes, uh, that would be lovely if you, you could sign them as well. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely, no problem. If you let me know who it is, and I can sign it to them. Right, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good idea. Because I thought that way, then if you let me know who it is, then I can just, you know, sign it to them. Yeah, brilliant. That sounds perfect. Perfect. So thanks for coming on today. You're welcome. Thanks for having it's me. It's been on. really, and I think I, I've learned a lot more about, <laughs> about the Star Wars collecting <laughs> world. Uh, so don't mention repro. Uh, you're not a fan of grading. Um, you think there might be too many lines. I've learned a lot. Brilliant. Lot. That's what this podcast is all about. So where can we find you? Oh, well, um, if you're in the east of England, BBC One, 7.30 Monday nights. Um, I'm on Twitter at David underscore Inside Out. But I do talk a lot about Star Wars, as you would expect. Um, yeah, so, so but thank you so much, Mark, for, for having no me on. So there you go there. Thanks to David for spending his valuable time to chat with us. And how about that? Two autographed books to give away. So if you want to win one of those books, you can email me. BlueHavisToys at gmail.com or you can message me on Twitter at Star Wars Toy Pod. All the links will be in the show notes. I'll put all the names into a hat and draw them on next week's podcast. Until then, may the toys be with you. Just one more round, friend. Then a homeward bound, friend. Don't forget me in your dreams. Just one more song, friend, and then so long, 
friend. The nights get shorter, it seems. Just one more rhyme, friend. Yes, it's a crime, friend. But you know time, friend. Time can fly. So it's good night, friend. Good night, but not goodbye.